Hey guys, welcome to, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a bit of a girly talk, a bit of a self-care girl talk Q&A type vibe. I've decided to make my room look really cosy. So in the last video you would have seen that I got these new bedside tables and I actually have a lamp. This is not just some glowing orb that you can see in the background. It's the Ikea like round lamp and it honestly makes my room look so cute. Like I am obsessed with it but I don't know why it looks like an orb in the back. I basically got some of my close friends on Instagram to ask me a couple of questions. Like I did the little close friends option and my friends that she went to tell, if you watching this are one of my friends that gave me a question, I literally love you so much because you guys gave me 34 questions. How crazy is that? That is honestly bad. Um, I had them all written in my journal just so that I can sort of keep track of what questions we're answering. Our first question is how do you balance having a social life with A-levels? Honestly, I don't think I do. A-levels are really, really difficult. They're a lot harder than GCSEs and sort of what I was expecting them to be like. Like, I really thought that I'd be able to handle A-levels. Um, I feel like you need to be able to sort of know where your priorities lie. And like, yes, school is really, really important, but seeing your friends and having a social life is also just as important. So I guess I'm always trying to remind myself that and like, that helps me balance things and also planning things in advance with your friends. So. I like to have like a plan with Jaya or Kira or both of them for each half term that we have and then if any other days sort of come in between then I'll message them but I make it so that we have like a structured meet every single sort of half term so that I know that I am still going to meet them and I am still going to have some sort of a social life. How do you deal with stress? Um, honestly, once again I don't think I do. Stress is something that a lot of people have to try and deal with whether you're at school, whether you're an adult. But some things that I really like to do is sort of having like the wind down days or taking time to like sort of take care of myself. Having things that you know make cut make you calm, like knowing what TV shows to watch. Like I this sounds so weird, but I started watching For Me Once. Don't get me wrong, love that show to pieces, but I started it during my mocks and I'd watch it before I went to bed and then I would have horrible sleep that like that night. Because it was just like sort it was like an adrenaline boost. So I feel like watching a show like that before you go to bed, unless that's something you can handle, definitely not for me. Like when I'm having a stressful day, I feel like I need to watch a show like Friends or Gilmore Girls where I can just sort of relax. I love to journal. Journaling has become my thing this year. I've literally become obsessed with my journal. Like playing a game or crocheting or baking or meditating or even speaking to a friend. Like I feel like things that aren't really superficial are also really, really important to do. What should I do if I can't make any friends? This question honestly broke me. Um, my friend Loki was just asking this in the state of the question, like she has loads of friends. <laughs> I feel like making friends is so difficult no matter what age you're at. Like I know a lot of people say when you're younger, it's really easy to make friends, but if you're really antisocial or like actually awkward kid, it can also be just as difficult. Like I knew some girls in my primary school that would be would find it so hard to become friends. Whereas I was, I've always been a social butterfly. Like there are certain situations where I do get really really awkward and really shy, but I tend to be quite a social butterfly. But like, making friends can be really difficult. But doing things like I know a lot of people say to join clubs and to go to like the gym or join sort of like Pilates or stuff like that. Sort of trying to like go see people more, reaching out to people more, and like there's no harm in someone sort of being cold like you trying to make friends with them and they sort of ice away do you know what i mean like i feel like a lot of people would hate that happening i feel like i would and that's definitely happened to me in the past before but that person just wasn't meant for you trying to step out of your comfort zone and just to be speaking to people and to always try and look for an opportunity to meet new people whether that's like your mum saying hey we're going out for dinner with my friends and their kids coming do you want to come along and normally in a situation like that where you'd normally say no because you're like Ill, hanging out with my mum and her friends and their kids horrible this is not me saying this from my personal experience I love doing stuff like that but in that circumstance if you want to make friends just go do it best ways to revise okay I do want to do like a proper sort of like revision -y series type vibe when it comes to closer to exam season but some things that I really really do enjoy doing um, I've just gotten into the habit of blurting which I basically it's where you get like a whiteboard or like a piece of paper whatever you want to use and you sort of just like get everything that's in your head about a certain topic blurt it onto a board like you just spill it all out and then you sort of go back in like a different colour or like you know go back a couple of days later and sort of fill in the bits that you've forgotten and then you just keep doing that method over and over again and I find that's a really good way for like content heavy subjects like I've definitely really done that a lot for like biology and psychology in terms of like other subjects like I guess maths and chemistry ones where they're more 
sort of physical I tend to do a lot of practice questions I also one thing that I've started to realize actually helped me a lot during my mocks was making sort of revision sheets to go through the night before an exam like obviously the night before your exam you don't want to be going over your like 3,000 flashcards that you've made for that paper but having revision seat sheets that sort of consolidate a certain topic or like a, a chapter into one sheet it means that you can go over stuff and in that test but it's sort of more concise and it's just the key things hopefully you've then done revision prior so that's to get your extra knowledge but the sort of main basic things will be on that sheet if you do want like a proper sort of exam season type videos and definitely come back to my channel or just subscribe to my channel and wait until exam season which i think for us in, in, in England, for me it is like May, June time. I think I'm gonna start doing my exam season stuff in like April, um, just so that we sort of get like the build up to it. To stay calm throughout it. Honestly, I am probably one of the worst people to ask this because I am a nervous wreck during exam season. I remember in my year 12 mocks, I had a horrible rash on my arm because I was so stressed out about this. I think one thing that you just really need to remember is that I saw like this picture on Pinterest or something, it was maybe on TikTok, and it was like a really round big circle, and there was a tiny little dot in the middle, and it was like this moment of your life is like this tiny little dot, and your life is like a really big circle. Like you've still got so much more to live for. Like as much as this moment means so much right now, it won't in the bigger picture. Obviously, that sounds really stupid because if you've failed your GCSEs or your A levels haven't gone well, you might not be able to go to the course that you want, which means that your dream job doesn't happen and all these things that seem really stressful, but you just need to remember to take each day as it comes and to not think about 20 years down the line where you might not be doing the job that 18 year old you picked to do. Does that, I don't know if that makes any sense. Also remembering that once your exam's done, you can't do anything to change it. So if you've walked out an exam and you're like, oh my gosh, that was the worst exam I've ever done in my life, so be it. You can't, and I know that sucks, but you can't do anything about it. And the most that you can do is try again next time. And I know that sounds so stupid, especially with A level exams, that you can't really reset them. You can, but you know, in an exam where it feels like you, it's a be all or end all, you just got to, there's, most subjects have more than one exam, so you could just work a little harder on the next one. I don't know. The next question, what's the hardest thing about sixth form? The fear of like taking a day off. I know that sounds so weird, but I feel like in your sixth form lessons, you cover so much more than you did at GCSE. So when you're ill and you need to take a day off, it's stressful because you know that you're gonna miss out on quite a chunk of content especially if you're like in biology and psychology subjects where they're very content heavy so they need to be fast paced i'm always feeling like oh my gosh i've just missed out on like three million things that i need to learn for my exam what's your plan after six months okay so the ideal plan is to go to uni guys um i don't want to share too much about it because I still am not 100% sure about what's gonna happen in the future. Like I know what I wanna be and I know what like my career choice is, it's just whether or not I'll get there. Okay, another question I actually don't know what the answer is, my travel plans for after the A-levels. So the goal was, was for me and Kira to go on a little trip together. I don't think that's gonna happen now. And then me and Jaya were like, we might go together. Also, if you guys don't know, Kira and Jaya are like some of my closest friends, Sam. They're my closest two besties. Um, you will have seen them multiple times on this channel. Um, they're literally here all the time. This question I thought was really, really interesting. Um, basically, how are you finding being at this age where you're not really, when you're not at university yet, but you're no longer a school kid? I thought this question was so interesting because I've never really thought about it before and it sort of led me into this whole train of thought of like how I feel because obviously yeah like I've said like I'm not at university yet but I'm also at the age where I can go out and I can go clubbing or whatever with my friends which I haven't done yet um she's still not gone out so guys hit me up let's go out <laughs> joking um but like I'm also not a school child, like school right now used, to, school used to be about seeing your friends and being social, but school right now is literally just about exams and sort of making sure that I'm understanding all the content and getting as much information in my brain as I can. But like, it's not what it used to be. So I'm no longer a school kid, like that's geeky little school kid that loved going to school. But I'm also not a university student where it's all so exciting and it's new and it's a degree and your work, you're getting closer to your goal. Like it feels kind of weird 
being in that middle bit like I feel like an adult but I don't feel feel like I'm not actually an adult yet because I'm not on my own sort of navigating the world if that makes sense my favorite shops to go buy some clothes from okay these are like some of the most basic shops that I feel like everyone sort of goes to now I'm a very much H&M I'm very much a Primark -y girl I know that they kind of do fast fashion which I know isn't great, but I feel like it's quite difficult to find good places that don't do fast fashion nowadays. Also bought a couple of clothes from Stradivarius, Bershka. Um, I really want to shop from like Pull and Bear and like other places. Like I feel like I want to become a basic girl with my shopping. But like right now, my closest shops are literally H&M and a Primark. So that's where I am most of the time. My next question kind of makes me a bit sad because it's my opinions on Love Island this year. So they're doing the Love Island All Stars, if you guys didn't know. And I actually haven't watched it. I'm so frustrated at myself. Why have I not watched it? And then I can't even log into my ITV. Something's happened to my ITV account. So I can't catch up on it. I'm a gold or silver jewellery person. Right now I am wearing rose gold jewellery. Sorry. Um, yeah, you guys know that I have these two Pandora rings on me at all times. It's my little tiara ring and then i've got this little like heart band thing but you guys also know that i constantly have my little silver bracelet that jaya got me for my birthday a couple of years ago and it's sort of just like i don't know i've always worn this every single day of my life i it's so i guess for me it sort of depends what clothes i'm wearing like when i'm wearing my asian wear like my own sort of clothes like my Punjabi kapra my Punjabi clothes i'm very much a gold girl um because i feel like it just looks better However, when I'm in like my Western wear, my English clothes, I feel like I'm more of a silver girl, besides from my rings, because my rings are always gonna be rose gold. I'm never gonna change out my rings for any other rings. Your fave things about being a girl. I just thought this was such a cute question because I feel like a lot of people always complain about being a girl because of periods and boys and stuff like that. But I feel like being a girl is quite fun and I feel like I am a little bit of a girly girl. And honestly, I don't really know. The reason why I love being a girl is just sort of like the community. Like, obviously, girls can be bitchy and girls can be rude. But the sort of girl supporting girls moment, like, I've just been added onto a little girls group chat of, like, little mini content creators. And I literally love them all. Like, they're so cute. And it's, like, giving such girl supporting girls vibe. And I literally love it. Like, just when girlies are nicely to each other, like, friendly to each other. And when we all sort of help each other out. Like, I think that's so sweet. Um... And also just like, I feel like girls sort of bond in a different way to guys do. Like, sorry, there might be boys on here being like, no, we actually bond really well with our guy friends. But for like me personally, like, I feel like girls can like tell a lot of secrets to each other and it's sort of like, it just seems like a, such a cute little thing being like a girl having a friendship. I think my favourite thing is having friendships and like the bonds that you form whilst being a girl. How to help a friend get over an ex. Honestly, I don't really know. I feel like one thing that's really really important is keeping that friend busy like constantly asking if they want to hang out i know that sometimes the person might want to just shut themselves away even if they're just going through a bad time it doesn't even have to be a breakup but you need to sort of help get them back out and back into their like feeling of normalness like trying to ask them to meet up even if it's literally just to chill in pajamas at their house or at your house watching movies eating popcorn sort of vibe like, one big thing that a lot of people do struggle with about breakups is that you have someone that's constantly there and then they're just gone so being a being a friend in that situation I feel like you should just try and surround yourself you should always try and like sort of help them out and be there for them how to get back on track after a bad day I know that a lot of people are coming against rot culture at the moment but I love rot rotting culture I don't really push myself after I've had a bad day I don't force myself to do things that I don't want to do. I sort of sit, feel my feelings, journal it out, have a bit of a cry, have a bit of a dance party, perhaps do like cook something that I know I'm gonna love, like a homey meal, like mac and cheese, or like, I don't know, like a pizza. Just really do have a day that makes me happy or like have a day of things that make me me sort of thing. My favorite skincare slash makeup products. Honestly, skincare I feel like I need to venture out on. I don't have a skincare routine. Like, I have a skincare routine, but it's the same skincare routine I've had since I was, like, eight. And I feel like she needs to be ventured out more. And my skin is definitely changing. And I don't know if you guys can tell, I have a massive breakout on my chin. And it is horrible. Um, I have not covered it with makeup. And I thought, because we're just having a girly chat, why should I cover my face, my chin spots with makeup? Because you guys aren't going to care. In terms of makeup, though... 
Um, I am obsessed with the Fenty Beauty contour stick. That's amazing. Using a concealer to, no, a brush to blend out your concealer. That's my favourite thing. A pressed powder to then like set your under eyes. That I've been loving. Um, the Lash Paradise Mascara from Rimmel I want to say. I'm not too sure who that's from. Also just a really dewy setting spray. Like I feel like sometimes my powder makeup doesn't look as dewy as I want it to and I just spray it with like a spray and it looks so good afterwards. How do you do your wavy hair? So I don't know if this counts as my wavy hair. This is literally air dried from having a shower yesterday. And um, I have two different ways of how I do my wavy hair. One sort of like the school heatless way, which is where I literally will just plait it and my hair just sticks. I will, the first day that I do it, my hair goes more poofy than wavy. But then as the week goes on, like by the Friday, the waves are really, really cute. However, they're just very straight up here. That is the one thing that I don't like. Or I use my curling wand, which is a really, really old one. So I don't know what it's called, but if I find out the name, I'll put it on the screen. How to overcome the end of a friendship. I have recently done, I guess. Um, but one thing that like I sort of think that you need to remember is that it's not bad to miss a friend or to miss an ex in that case as well like it's not bad to miss someone if you're no longer like hanging out with them like that's meant to happen that's allowed like especially if you spent your like a long time being with that person and being friends with them just sort of realizing that maybe the time wasn't right and friends come and go and seasons and some people are here to last for seasons whatever the sayings are um as cheesy as they are, I feel like just remembering things like that just sort of help. Making sure that you're surrounding yourself with other friends and other people that you love a lot. Sort of, obviously you are still going to miss that person, but you don't, you can't really feel it as much because you're surrounding yourself with other people that are positive and are loving. Okay, what is my go-to makeup style? Am I a clean girl girly or a soft glam girly? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know what you would call me because... I am the different type of person depending on the day. So like when it comes to school, it's literally concealer, mascara, brush up my eyebrows, call it a day. But when I'm like going somewhere like a little bit fancy, it's a bit of bronzer, a bit of blush, a bit of like, I guess you could call it a soft, no, a clean girl aesthetic type makeup. But then when I'm going to like a party or like a wedding, I will then become a soft glam girl. Where do I get my outfit inspiration? Honestly, Pinterest, TikTok, my mum. My mum honestly comes up with some of the most coolest outfit inspirations ever. Currently looking at the list. We still have quite a few questions left. We have about 12 questions left and I feel like this video is already quite long. So I might answer one or two of these personal questions and then maybe come back and answer the rest of them some other day. It was my biggest lesson that I learned in 2023. Honestly, I think it was based off of sort of the last question that I answered, but sort of, People aren't going to last for as long as you want them to. That sounds really depressing. But as in, you can't force a person to stay in your life if they don't want to. You also can't expect people to stay with you forever. Not in terms of death, but just in terms of friendship. Like, people will outgrow you, you will outgrow people, and people will just leave. And you have to be somewhat okay with that. And I know that sounds really cold to just be like, oh, you have to be okay with it. Not in terms of that, but sort of you just have to accept it and be able to move on. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it all the way to the end, then I love you loads and I'm very grateful to have you here. But I just want to thank my friends again for asking all these questions. You honestly all are amazing and I love you all so much. If you haven't subscribed or liked this video yet, please do because I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you again soon with another video. Bye!